we beat ourselves, and that's not to take anything away from Coatesville, but uh, you know, some miscues on special teams hurt, and you put that together with a young team, and next thing you know, you chalk up a loss instead of a win. Well, McCaskey will kick it off. And they will defend the south goal. York High. Back to see with Jason Roscoe, number seven. 83, Chris Wilson to kick it off for McCaskey. And we are ready to go from the meadow. Low kick. Handled on the hop. Looking for some running room. As Brandon Nelson. Nelson gets to the outside. Makes a nice move, gets it out over the, the 35, out to about the 38. So York High with pretty good field position to start their first drive. Doing a lot of that on his own. He really had to make that happen uh, and really come back against the grain. Bobby Bagels brings us tonight's starting lineup from the York High offense. Jamar Mosley, the junior quarterback. Davis Roscoe Sweeney in the backfield. McMillian, St. Orange or, and is the tight end. Marquette, the other split end. Fuentes, Simpson, Wilson, and Travis Washington up front for the Bearcats. Trying to get to the outside is Roscoe, and Roscoe turns the corner and gets out near the 45. Looks like a play designed to go up the middle, Craig Russell there, and it's back with bounce to the outside. The defense from McCaskey, Gardner, Lee, Ruoff, Ortiz, Shockley, McClure, Wilson, McKayer, McKayer, Chappelle, Rodriguez, and Brown. And you see primarily a senior-dominated defense there, just two juniors on the defense for the uh, Red Tornadoes. And that uh, defensive lineup brought to you by Bubby and Bagels, the Bagels with an attitude. And flags on second down and three after the seven-yard game by Roscoe. And I think, unfortunately, it's going to be against the Bearcats. Good ball. Uh, now I'm back in midfield. Craig. Against McCaskey. I'm throwing a flag on you. <laughs> and that will give the Bearcats a first down. Don't rush the judgment. Yep, absolutely. First down. That moves the football just over the midfield strike. And you see it resting right there on the orange 100. Which, as we said earlier, signifying the 100th year of football here at York High. A great tradition. And right at the middle, boy, some good, strong running, just pushing the pile forward. And that's going to be enough for another York High first down. Dan Davis with a strong run. And there you see the York Oil Service game time temperature 80, human, still 60 degrees. Boy, Dan Davis carried the pile there, Frank, for about an extra five or six yards. So they looked like a scrum, not an offensive uh, play. It really was movement of the defense. Stepping back, big hole to the corner. Could go all the way. It's going to be a York High touchdown. Tackle Sweeney. And I'll tell you what, the play before, Craig, set that one up because the McCaskey defense bunched in on Davis and Sweeney had the corner. Absolutely. And uh, a nice scoring that time by the Bearcats. And J.D. Martin has got to be encouraged by the play of his offensive line. Conversely, this is exactly what happened to McCaskey last week. Allentown, Allen struck early on a bigger play, an 80-yard play, but nonetheless, a big play early. And then the young team from McCaskey responded. Let's see what happens and they get the football. Extra point for the Bearcats is up. And it is good. 11-15 remaining and York High. As you mentioned, Craig, very impressive. And, and one of the things that we like to see, especially in the early part of the season with a young team is this, uh, this right here for York High. Being uh, speed, as you say, is so important in any sport. Has a Sweeney off to the corner, and you see nobody can catch him when he gets that side of Great blocking at the line of scrimmage, good reads by the York High running backs, and the band right in front of us, the cheerleaders, reason to celebrate. Well, it'll be interesting to see Craig if Frank from McCaskey can uh, regroup for the second week in a row. Obviously, they showed us uh, showed if they could do that last week. So they'll have to bounce back again. David Brown will be back deep for the Red Tornadoes. 
I think you can pretty much bet on them this stuff that they will in fact be It's going to be a good football game. Uh, you know, Chucky Root is still not sure what to have for this team. He's gone through two scrimmages, he's gone through an opening week. Uh, and I hate to quote Joe Paterno, but you're never really as good as you think you are when you win. You're not as bad as you think you are when you lose. So, they got one team on the field tonight that has a loss under their belt in real time. And of course, uh, the Red Tornado, which is a big win over Allentown Allen, makes them 1 0 coming into tonight's ball game. Ronald Stinson to kick it off for York High. And Brown takes it at the 15. Looking to stay behind a wedge. And bounces it out to about the 32 yard line where the McCaskey offense will come onto the field for the first time. David Brown is that 5'6", 150 pound running back that we said ran to 738 yards last year and 151 yards and 15 carries last year. And the scoring drive by your side brought to you by Settler Dodge. Three plays, 37 yards and just 45 seconds off the clock. Gets the Bearcats off to a good start. And that was Sweeney turning off that field. Mark Kelly, the quarterback for McCaskey, backs in the I formation. Kelly looking. Boy, gets pressure, the ball's loose, and York High picks it up. Money McWilliams, McMillian, and he's going to have another York High touchdown. And I'll tell you what, Craig, we haven't played a minute yet, but already one thing stands out, and that is the line play of York High on both sides. They've got great penetration that time on defense. And when you can get penetration, you're going to disrupt the rhythm of the offense. And Monty McMillian, the great guy at the right spot, picks it up and runs it into the end zone for a York High touchdown. He turned about 35 yards, I believe, and now Simpson will come in to attempt the extra point. And this one is low, and I believe it's blocked. But nevertheless, York High off to just a great start. Still 10.59 to go. In this first quarter, and the Bearcats lead it 13 to nothing. And here, here you get look. Look at the penetration here. Say about five jerseys. Right, right here. The quarterback is just frozen in his tracks, and then the collapse of the defense late right on. He loses the football. The quick pickup that time by McMillian, and he's off to the races. And boy, what a start for the Bearcats! <laughs> and what a start for McCaffrey. I'm sure they're starting to wonder. Well, if you remember one thing that uh, Coach Feldman just, you know, mentioned to me and said, what, what are you concerned going into week two? He said, I am concerned about overconfidence because these kids have been hearing all week long that they really did a well of a job going to Allentown and beating Allentown Allen 38 to 7. Well, your tie will pick it off again and back. Once again for the Red Tornadoes is David Brown, number 43. A short kick this time handled by one of the up backs at the 30. Jeff Gardner and Gardner is hit and driven back. Brought down about the 37 and there's a lot of fire in the orange and blue right now. Okay. Uh, go Chris. So first and ten for McCaskey. At the 37. As we mentioned, Mark Keller in there. The quarterback back once again in the I formation. Second back is Brown. Brown breaks tackle to the outside. Look out! And finally run down by Brandon Nelson, but David Brown. That's what uh, Coach Feldman was talking to us about before the game. Again, hit the pack at the line of scrimmage. There was nothing there. Bounced it to the outside. Very similar to what York High did on their first drive. And picks up a big gain and crosses midfield to the Bearcat 43. Here's the Bubby Bagel starting offense. Keller, the quarterback, Brown, Rodriguez in the backfield. Sangry, Wilson, Shockley, DeSantis, Wilson, Ruoff, Ortiz, and Scott Reed. On the offense for McCaskey. Single back this time on first and ten. Straight drop. And in and out of the hands. Intended for their big play receiver, number 83, Chris Wilson. 
And here's the defense for your time. Howard, Jackson, Jackson, Tamar Scott, Ronald Simpson, Van Davis, Taz Sweeney, Monty McMillian, we saw him already, Jason Roscoe, Brandon Nelson, and Anthony Kutoff. Bobby Bagels makes the only New York style bagels in the area. Choose from our full line deli and vegetarian menu. Stop by Manchester Crossroads for the Fry Shopette and try the bagel with an attitude, Bobby Bagels. Second and ten on the incompletion. Once again, single back. Great drop. Pressure once again. And Keller is able to get out of the pressure and move it forward a couple yards. So once again, great penetration from the York High defensive line. And Keller, the left-hander, almost has no time back there at all. He does manage to pick up a couple of that time. It's going to be third down and eight. So a big uh, third down already early in this game is McCanson needs to develop some momentum here going at, going against the York High team that's obviously very fired up, leading 13 to nothing. Single back this time is Brown, the option, the pitch back to Brown, and Brown's not going to have any running room, and York High defensively playing very, very well. Good penetration by Darnell Jackson forced the pitch early, and then he almost got back to tackle Brown, but nevertheless a loss for McCaskey, and it's going to be fourth down. Here you get a look at it. Look at the penetration by 19. He's in there, and Brown slipped his tackle, but he was able to slow Brown up enough that he made to come in and make the tackle. James Jackson finally helped to finish him off along with Van Davis, but Darnell Jackson was the guy who really created the problem for uh, McCaskey on that play. So fourth down once again. And now an illegal procedure call against McCaskey. And boy, absolutely nothing going right right now for the Red Tornado. That pushes the ball back to midfield. Roscoe and Sweeney back deep to the Bearcats. Going toward Roscoe. Inside the 10, looking for some room. Look out. Gets to the outside. Gets a great block from Davis and down the sideline. And here he goes again. Jason Roscoe's going to go all the way. Unbelievable. And I'll tell you, the block by Dan Davis was the one that sprung Jason Roscoe. And you talk about Jason, 90 yards on the return from Roscoe. Unbelievable. So your tie. What a start for the Bearcats. Still 8.29 to go, and they're going to be attempting their third extra point. They lead it 16 to nothing. And boy, oh boy, we talked about the big play prior to the game. Well, your tie has got three of them. And two of those thanks to Jason Roscoe. Now the Bearcats are going to go for two. They have the full house backfield. And right at the middle, and Kelvin Harrison does not make a two-point conversion. So that still leaves the score. York High 19, McCaskey nothing, 8.29 to go in this first quarter. And Craig, uh, did you catch the breath? I think I'm back. <laughs> A little technical difficulties, but I'm back. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked because, uh, you know, a big question mark coming into this game. I mean, J.D. Martin seemed quietly confident in this team. Uh, Scott Feldman a little bit more concerned, but still confident in what he's seen in his young team. Uh, I don't think he could have ever expected this. But the only thing that York High has not done well is convert extra points. And that's always been a bit of an Achilles heel for them. It, it really has. But, uh, you know, we mentioned it on the first drive, and, and we can say it again. Um, the line play from York High is probably, at least from my perspective, got to be one of the most pleasing things to J.D. Martin at this point. It's incredible, and i got to ask you, how did Rocco get out of that pass and make it the whole way up the sideline? I knew he was fast, yeah. but he really looked well. He's two guys 
initially, but Van Davis really made the block that, that sprung him. And you're right, then once he got even, even the vision of the end zone, he was gone. Yeah, it was like he was on the, the 100 meter sprint in the spring or something like that. But I'll tell you what, the York kind of team has done a lot of little things right here early. And what they need to do now is to continue that momentum. I mean, certainly a 19 to nothing lead this early in the ball game is not a safe lead by any means. Now that's for sure, and uh, James Jackson will kick it off for York High. Dave Brown back deep again for McCaskey, and now, now the onus really falls on uh, Langston McCaskey. Little Brown handles it at the 15 on one hop, right up the middle, 30, 35, just gets tripped up, and comes down right around the 40 yard line. Fortunate for York High because Dave Brown was out of steam and just got tripped up. Looks like the spot's going to be about the 39. Well, they've done a pretty good job uh, as the Bearcats are containing early Dave Brown. But, you know, there's a lot of big play uh, players on this team. Their tight end is a player to watch. Number 21, Dennis Shocker, 6'2", 200 pounds. We talked about the big wideout, Chris Wilson, number 83, 6'5", 220. So, a lot for the Bearcats to stay focused on here in this football game. McCaskey with it at the 39. York High showing blitz up the middle. Brown. Boy, Brown's a hard runner, Craig. Gets it out near the 45. And uh, York High's going to have to make sure they wrap that guy up to bring him down. Very important. They would be, be sophomore if they would think that this game is over at this point. And uh, well, just a lot of time to go. And it's just that they played some very good defense and got some key turnovers here early. Watch this. He hits the hole very quickly through that line of scrimmage this time, and the tackle is in the defensive backfield. Second down and five. And quarterback keeps his Keller, and he's brought down again in the backfield. Boy, Mark Keller just not having much time to do anything. I think he wanted to try to run the option there. Uh, he faked the belly, gave to Hector Rodriguez, and pulled it back in, and by the time he did that, he was, he was uh, in the... Uh,